from Luke chapter 4, verse 14, right after Jesus was tempted, it says, and, and Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit to Galilee, and a report about him went out through all the surrounding country, and he taught in their synagogues, being glorified by all. Again, um, hope you're doing well. I'm coming to you um, today from a different location in my study office area at the church building. Um, there, there are a few of us that have been around here for the last few weeks. I know most of you haven't seen the building in that time. I assure you it still stands, and it's anxious to have it uh, full of all of you as soon as possible. Uh, but I'm glad that we, we have this ability to get together and um, gather and study. And that verse is sort of an introduction to that here in a few minutes. I do want to share some um, important details and notes about things that are going on. Uh, you're, you're aware that we're providing lunch bags, uh, food bags, with breakfast and lunch, actually, for students. Uh, we did last Friday. We're planning on doing it again this Friday. And you've helped in uh, getting the, uh, the different groceries and so forth that go in those. Um, I want you to know uh, we'll be giving those out from between 4 and 6 on Friday again. If you wish to bring something for that, uh, you can do so at, uh, during daylight hours, basically, um, between now and then. Um, the one item that they were short on and... Uh, were in need of were um, see mac and cheese bowls, micro microwavable mac and cheese bowls. So, if you can uh, provide a bunch of those, that would be wonderful. Also, we from the office here, we are planning on sending out sort of a modified bulletin, um, a newsletter this week that will have some of the kinds of things that you're used to seeing in our bulletin, and maybe some other things. Uh, we're planning on mailing that out um, by way of snail mail, uh, old-fashioned mail. Um, hopefully you get it by the weekend, maybe first of the week. It just depends on how quick they deliver. Uh, but it'll have some articles in it from uh, the elders and some facts and figures and different things. We hope to have a section for the kids as well. Uh, but we're, we're wanting to stay in touch as many ways as we can during this time. So I hope you look forward to that and that it's a blessing to you. Also wanted to mention to you about a lesson series that we're going to go through over the next week, um, starting Sunday. Of course, uh, this is virus and, and um, our isolation sort of interrupted a series we were doing from the book of Ephesians, you might remember. Uh, we'll get back to that when the Lord wills. Uh, but this next week, um, many of our religious neighbors call Holy Week, starting Sunday and running through the following Sunday. And it corresponds with the last week of Jesus' life. I prefer to call that the most important week in the history of the world. And it starts with Jesus coming into Jerusalem on Sunday before uh, the crucifixion. And so... This coming Sunday, uh, the lesson will be centered around that event, Jesus entering Jerusalem. And then what I'm going to try and do each day next week is have a broadcast where we talk about the events of that day as recorded in the Gospels. So on Monday, we'll talk about what we know happened on Monday and so forth, up until uh, Friday, uh, the day of the crucifixion, and then um through Sunday, of course, the great day, the Lord's Day, when he was raised from the dead, and, and um, again, that our world knows as Easter. So I hope that will be a profitable and, and a, a good study for us over the next several days, starting on Sunday, and I invite you to tune in for those broadcasts, okay? Uh, but, but this evening, talking about... Uh, 
concept of power again, and especially tonight, power outages. I hope we don't have one while we're locked in our homes, you know, but um, power outages can certainly be frustrating. And uh, several years ago now, a, a guy named Tom Barnard wrote uh, about a power outage that his family experienced. And, and he said the following, let me just read his comments about it. He said, we had a problem at our house one time. It wasn't a total power outage, just a partial one. One half of the house had power, the other half had none. But the had none half was crucial. Air conditioners, computer, microwave, range and oven, televisions, appliances, washer dryer, garage door opener, you know, the crucial stuff. Fortunately, the telephone worked, and so we did the normal thing and called the power company. They did the normal things and said it would be some time before they could get a repairman there. Some time for them meant late that afternoon. Not as bad as next week, but not nearly as good as we're on our way. No computer and no television caused all kinds of frustration. And it was a hot summer day, not a good time to be without air conditioning. When the electric, electrical uh, utility repairman arrived, he discovered the problem quickly. It wasn't something we had done. One of the two hotlines into the house had shorted out. It happened underground at the furthest point from the house near the property line. So a temporary hookup was connected and full power was restored within an hour of the repairman's arrival. He had to dig down to the line to find exactly where the short was located. When the section of broken cable was removed, it was discovered that something as small as a pinhole in the cable located several feet underground and out of sight allowed just enough moisture to invade the cable and cause the short, making the electrical system only partially functional. Well, the parallel is that power outages can occur in a similar way in our Christian lives. You know, we've all experienced it from time to time. When something small, seemingly insignificant, can happen, and sort of drain us of the spiritual power we need to live for Christ in this world. It's not like everything blows up at once, but just enough to frustrate us, to discourage us. And we may even operate like this for a while, not on full power, um, using spiritual candles and flashlights, but not for long. Eventually, the wick burns away, or the batteries go dead. So it's best not to ignore power outages of any kind. We need to address them when they happen. The Apostle Paul understood the importance of power in Christian living, especially as he wrote to the Romans. He talks about power a lot in the book we, we know as Romans. And as you approach the end of the books, it's a long book, you know, um, but especially in chapters 14 and 15, Paul is dealing with something that can create just the kind of situation that we've been describing, a spiritual power outage in individual Christian lives. Unfortunately, in Romans 14 and 15, the cause of the power outage is other Christians. People in Rome, in those churches, uh, the Roman church, weren't getting along too well. They had issues, and they were arguing, and they were saying things to one another that they shouldn't have been saying. And that is just so hurtful, isn't it, in the context of the church? I mean, we have such high expectations of each other in the church that we're going to treat each other right and that we're going to build each other up all the time. 
and we're going to make a real effort to encourage one another all the time. So when it happens that we hurt one another with an action or a word, that hurt hurt can, can be extra deep. And it can definitely cause a spiritual power outage. Uh, there was a girl, little girl one time, who prayed the following brief prayer. She said, Lord, please make the bad people good and the good people nice. And that's, uh, that's really what Paul is trying to do in Romans 14 and 15, to make the good people nice. Christians weren't treating each other so well, and he was determined to change that. In, in chapter 14 of Romans, he tells them, don't judge one another, don't be judgmental, and don't be hateful. And he says, don't cause a fellow Christian to stumble in their faith because of things you do, because of your actions. And then in chapter 15, he really cites the example of Jesus. He talks about how Jesus did not seek his own will, but he sought what was best for everybody. And Paul says, that's our pattern. That's how Christians are to conduct themselves, thinking always of others and not putting self first. Then in chapter 15, Verses 5, 6, and 7, he really expresses his desire for them when he says this. Listen to these words. May the God of endurance and encouragement grant you to live in such harmony with one another, in accord with Christ Jesus, that together you may with one voice glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, welcome one another as Christ has welcomed you for the glory of God. Did you hear the unity in that statement, that blessing that, that Paul speaks? Paul knew how important that was, because you know, when Christians can't get along with other Christians, it can cause a power outage. And power outages can be discouraging and frustrating and again, if they're ignored, they, they can become debilitating and destructive to a soul. Well, there's one other verse in this context, Romans 15, that I want us to, to really think about for a few more moments. Paul sort of closes out this section where he's trying to get Christians to get along with one another in Rome. And he says this in... Uh, verse 13, Romans 15, verse 13. He writes, May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that by the power of the Holy Spirit you may abound in hope. I want you to notice, if you'll look at that verse in, in your Bible, all the vitally important words in that one little verse. They're really words that, Paul, that, that the, the writer Paul has, has taken the entire book of Romans to explain and expound. Uh, they're all packed into this one verse, so this verse must be really important. They're words, the ones I'm referring to, words like hope and joy and peace and power. Uh, Paul spent a lot of ink in Romans telling us what all these words mean in relationship to the gospel of Christ. And now he packs them all into this one verse near the end of his writing. Again, it says, May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that by the power of the Holy Spirit, you may abound in hope. It would be sort of hard to pick out one word from that verse and, and say, that's the most important one. 
Uh, so I'm not going to try to do that, but for our purposes, I, I really want us to zero in on the word power. The word power is so important in the New Testament, and especially in the writings of, of the Apostle Paul. Not only him, but really in Paul. Uh, go back to chapter 1 of Romans, verse 16. You remember it says there that the gospel is the power of God for salvation. And then another letter of Paul's to the Corinthians, the first Corinthian letter, chapter 1, verse 18. Paul says that the message of the cross is the power of God. And later in that same chapter, in verse 24, Paul says that Christ is the power of God. In chapter 4 and verse 20 of 1 Corinthians, Paul says, For the kingdom of God it does not consist in talk, but in power. And then as an example from another writer, Peter, in his second letter, 2 Peter 1 verse 4, he says, His divine power has granted to us all things that pertain to life and godliness. So, power is an important New Testament idea, but it's possible, due to the pressures of life, and sometimes even the pressures of life in the church, to suffer a power outage. Periods in our life when we're down, when we're discouraged, when we lack spiritual energy, uh, we really don't feel like doing anything for God or maybe doing anything on behalf of the church. We don't feel spiritual for whatever reason. Th these are power outages, and we all face them. We all have to learn to deal with them as best we can. The important thing is to make sure that they're only temporary. That is, that we deal with them. And so we limit their effect in our lives. We don't, we don't want to ignore them. We don't want to walk away from them. We don't want to pretend like it never happens to us. Because it happens to all of us. And most importantly, we, we don't want to think that we can fix it by ourselves. That's where we really get into trouble. Have you ever heard of a thing called a bathysphere? Uh, I'm going to take a cue from Sister Sharon's videos that she's been doing for the kids and show you a couple of pictures. Okay, I'm not as good at that as her, uh, but I did print a couple of pictures to illustrate this. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with a bathysphere, but I've got a picture of one here. See if I can get it on the screen where you can see it. That is a bathysphere, or at least a model of one in a museum. A bathysphere is, a, is basically a miniature submarine that is used, or, or maybe was used, to explore the depths of the ocean. And that thing could go places so deep that if you used any other kind of uh, vessel, it would be crushed. Uh, you know, a, a regular submarine, if it went to the depths that, that a bathysphere could go, would be crushed like an aluminum can. Uh, but you, you might wonder, how is it possible for this thing to go to such depths without being destroyed? Well, it's the way it's built. It is built um, with a plate steel uh, exterior that's, that's several inches thick and um, and basically that keeps the water out and so forth but it also makes it a very heavy thing and hard to maneuver um, and you notice it's small and so on the inside it's very cramped it's very uncomfortable if you're uh, unlucky enough to be riding in it that's a bathysphere. Now think about that for a moment very carefully as to what we're talking about. That's what we tend to get like when we try to fix power outages by ourselves in the spiritual realm. 
pressure hits us in the world or in the church and what we tend to do is develop a thick outer crust and become pretty small on the inside not a good result is it but some get like that when under pressure back to the bathysphere if you take one of those things to the ocean floor you soon discover that you're not alone down there you turn your lights on and you look through the small uh, thick gla uh, plate glass windows and what do you see you see other creatures believe it or not you see fish uh, when you get to the bottom of the ocean and that, that's sort of an amazing thing if you think about it how does a fish survive at such depths that would crush a man-made object or at least most of them well a fish does it does it not with thick skin uh, these fish are able to move they remain supple and free uh, deep ocean fish really cope with extreme pressure from the outside by having an equal and opposite pressure on the inside their world their environment may press in on them but they're pushing out against it with just as much force that's an amazing piece of science that's interesting to study on its own um, but I, I want you to think about that in connection with our verse once more. Okay? Romans 15, 13. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace and belief, so that by the power of the Holy Spirit you may abound in hope. Think about those words. See, we need to remember when the pressures come, when the power outages occur, our response comes from God. Our power to push back is from Him. Specifically, Paul says it's from the Holy Spirit who indwells the Christian. So, an interesting study to do to look up all the power verses in the New Testament and read them and see what they say you will notice that they'll all be linked to God and Jesus and the gospel and the Holy Spirit when we suffer a power outage the way to make sure that it's temporary and it doesn't do great damage is to reconnect with God to get back into his word to open the prayer lines again uh, times of trouble are those times when we're most tempted not to pray and, and not to do other things that will relieve the pressure and uh, build power in us not to read our Bible not to fellowship with our brothers and sisters maybe not to come to, to church and not because we're social distancing but because we choose not to we're tempted to do those things when under pressure and i think it's because our enemy knows that that's the time when we need those things most the solution to a power outage is to call the power company the Godhead Father Son and Holy Spirit and make sure that the connection there is what it needs to be so one more time this great verse Romans 15 13 may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that by the power of the Holy Spirit you may abound in hope. Let's 
Let's pray to close our time. Heavenly Father, fill us with your spirit and help us to be shining lights in the world. Thank you for your word and its wisdom. And we ask you to continue to strengthen us as we go through a difficult time by those things that surround us, but use it to make us stronger. Thank you for Jesus, our Savior, and for the fact that he died for us. May we live for him. We pray in his name. Amen.